Hello and welcome back to another tutorial where we're looking at the modeling mode and in particular looking at how we can take a single object, like a, like a, in this case we'll be doing a bomb, and splitting it off into multiple materials and be able to create materials for those individual parts. So in here you're going to look at the UV editor briefly and look at the material attributes editor briefly as well, but overall you're going to see how you can split that apart. So a lot of the time when you're making your own models, you may find that it's not textured or anything like this. Okay, so here's an example of a model with no textures or materials. And yes, we can go ahead and set materials up, but right now it's a bit difficult because our object here is broken into just one piece. As you can see here, the material and mesh is set up with one piece and one material. Now to make my life a lot easier for this, I'm going to want to unwrap this as two separate materials. So first of all, we're going to break it down so we have two elements inside of this object. To do that, you go to modeling mode. So we go to modeling mode over here in the corner. With it selected, if you want to make sure you're not breaking the original model, you can do so by duplicating it first of all in the X form uh, option, duplicate. But I'm going to keep it as it is because I want to edit the whole entire thing. So I want to split this up. Now, sometimes polygroups are going to be set up for you automatically. So let's take a look and see if we've got lucky here and it's going to work with our polygroups. So I go to polygroup edit. Ah, no, we don't. So the problem we have here is that it's considering it is one big polygroup. And I want to break it down into multiple polygroups. So let's have a look at how you do that. You're going to go down to attributes and in here we're going to go to generate polygroups now there's different ways of generating the polygroups as you can see here a preview of each polygroup and this one's kind of messy and not really great at all so let's change the conversion mode so the conversion mode at the moment is set to face normal deviation so let's try changing a few more that's the quads we don't really want that uv islands aha this is looking a lot better Okay, brilliant. I think we'll keep it like that. And we're going to hit accept. And now we've got we go to that polygroup edit mode. You can see I can select individual parts of our object a lot better. And that is going to be important because we need to assign different material IDs, different polygroups. So let's go back down to our attribute section. And in here, we want to go to edit materials. And what I want to do is I want to select the polygroup. Now, at the moment, I can just click on here and it will just paint. I don't want to do that. I want to select the whole entire thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do flood fill and it will fill up the whole entire polygroup that I've selected there. Okay. Now I want to assign it a new material. So over here in the material editor, uh, we've got over here in the material section, active materials and materials, world grid material. I want to add a new element to this. Click on add and I want to assign it to this one. So the active material, I'm going to change that to our number one slot, this one here. And I'm going to go down to assign active material. So now that's going to be set to this one here. And I can see that if I just change that to pink, for example, accept it you'll see now we've got two material elements on this one model I meaning this element zero will be used for the string okay so now we can set up our uvs for our object so the bomb thing is pretty simple because this is going to be just a simple material really so i'm going to go back to my section mode and let's make the bomb material and we'll call it bomb M bomb and in here we're going to keep it black um, but we make it a bit more metallic so let's add a scalar value to our metallic here and I'm going to change it to 0.6 yeah it's not too bad let's go maybe a bit higher 0.8 yeah okay we'll go for that and roughness wise we're going to keep it as it is it can be like quite matte. Um, normal map, we can add a bit, like um, a bit of roughness to it in normal map here. So let's go ahead and add a texture to this. 
and let's search if we go for metal and we got metal steel normal map there you go you get these like little bumps appearing on it now which is looking a lot better we'll apply that save that and we're going to assign that to our element here okay obviously the final model won't be this big but it's just easier to navigate around but when it's normal size that should look pretty okay next is the string part so on the string part that's going to be a little bit different because i don't want it just to be a blank color i do want to have some sort of texture to it so i'm going to go ahead and create a new material m bomb ring and open this up and what i'm going to do in here is i'm going to change this preview here to cylinder to better get an idea of how this is going to look on that sort of rope sort of shape and what i'm going to do here is i'm going to have a sine wave and the sine wave is a value that's going to go up from minus one through zero up to one and then back down and that's going to happen over the course of like one second so what i'm going to do is i'm going to plug the sign into my base color and it's going to need an input and if you put in any value it's going to look at that sine wave and what color it should be on that sine wave so what i can actually do on here is i can put in a texture coordinate node and plug that in and we're going to get something interesting here now i don't want it to take into account both u and v i only need to care about the u so i'm going to uh whoop, drag out from my text coordinate and mask the component mask into just the r value and now you see this sort of gradient happening here and that's because this is a sine wave so the sine wave is starting at zero going up to one back down to zero now this number is a negative value now negative is always going to be black because you can't get darker than black so it's going to look just like it's black but the value is going up from zero to one down to minus one back to zero but we get this cool banding effect okay and what's really cool about this is that we can now duplicate this across and and mold and go across the sine wave in um and do more different types of bands so what i can do with the sine wave here is change the text coordinate here to u tiling of 10 and you'll see more banding to get like a sort of zebra effect going on okay and then what I'm going to do with the sign here is I'm going to sealing it and then plug down to base color. And now we just get these striations of even colors. So to get those bands in, I'm just going to add a sign, a value to the sign value here. And I'm going to add. 0 0.9 and now we get thinner lines and that's because what was now negative 1 now goes to negative 0 0.1 and anything else goes up above 0 which with our ceiling node just rounds it up to the nearest integer okay and that'll do for now I'm now going to apply that to my string I've got here. So let's go to my string, and there's my string. Now, at the moment, obviously, it doesn't look great at all. So what we can do is going to edit the UV island for that string there to make that look a little bit better. So we'll go back to modeling mode, and we're going to go down to UVs. And in here, we want to look at the UV editor. And this is the unwrap of your bomb okay so here we've got the base mesh here but here you can see are the various strings and at the moment it is stuck to the corner here which if we were doing it all one material that would be a good idea to do but we are doing two separate materials one for string one for the base of the body so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select my strings here and I'm going to scale them up massively. And I'm going to go to my move tool here. 
And we're going to go scout whoop, like this. And if I go back to the scene now, you can see the string. I oh, may be a bit too big. <laughs> maybe a bit too big. Uh, the lines uh, are going to be more repeated across the base of the string. So let me just bring that pack down a size or two. Let's do something like that. Okay, so there you go, looking a bit better. And it's now textured along that bit just fine. And if we want to make it more so, we just increase the scale of it a little bit. And there's our sort of chord effect type thing. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Um, I'm now going to go back to that material and I'm going to edit the colouring of it. So rather than having it just black and white, let's add a bit of uh, a tint to this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into alert because I'm going to make the white values one colour, the black values a different colour. So if I put in alert, linear interpolate, and put this ceiling value as the alpha, plug in the base colour there. Oh, oh disconnect the alpha. Um, I can now put in two colours I want to use. So I'm going to put in sort of brownish colour for the one value, which is B. And for the A value, I'm going to do a darker version of that. So I'm going to drag that out and multiply that by 0.2. Plug that in. Now, at the moment, you're seeing weirdness going on here, OK? Now, you may want to leave it like that. It may look okay for you. Um, I particularly don't want it like that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to clamp the value because what's actually happening here, because we've added 0.9 to it, the value is now exceeding the value space of 1. So off the ceiling here, we're going to clamp between 0 and 1. And now we get that sort of banding back. Let's make that a bit more subtle. I'm going to change this value up to 0.7 uh, or 6. Let's do 7. Okay. But ultimately, I just wanted to show you how you can use material editors and use the material tools in modeling mode to separate and customize the material for your objects. Um, but yeah, have fun with it. Play around and see what we can make. So there you go, very useful tool to understand if you've got assets from other places that you don't actually have the originals for, you can easily mess about with those in a lot easier way inside of Unreal. So if you like this video and want to see more content from myself, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where a donation of just $1 gets you access to all of our content early before anyone else. A massive thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members currently supporting the channel. Thanks for watching, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time.